Join Kids Hat Family. Tia, aren't you going to your friend's party? No, Tofu. Mummy has asked me to stay home with you tonight because she and Papa will be returning home late. Oh no! I'm sorry, Tia. Because of me, you can't go to your party. It's okay, Tofu. Sometimes we have to sacrifice things for the ones we love. Just like the little mermaid. Little mermaid? Is it a story? Tell me, Tia, please. The Little Mermaid Once upon a time, there was a sea kingdom at the bottom of the sea. The king of the seas had six beautiful daughters who were mermaids. They were all very beautiful, but the youngest of them was the prettiest of them all. She had a gentle face, big round eyes and a voice sweeter than anyone else's in the world. When the little mermaid turned 15 years old, her grandmother called her to her room. Come, my darling. Today you have turned 15. And from now onwards, you can go to the world above. Just remember, the people above are very different from us. They do not have a beautiful fish tail like us. Instead, they have two legs. Thank you, Grandmother. I have waited for this day for so long. When I return, I will tell you about everything I see above. That night, the little mermaid went to the surface of the water. The sight of the stars and the cool breeze that touched her face took her breath away. She was just getting used to the feeling when she saw a big ship cross in front of her. Aboard it, were many men and they were celebrating the birthday of the young prince who had just turned 16. The little mermaid was mesmerized with the handsome looks of the prince. She couldn't take her eyes off him as the ship sailed past her. She was so lost in him that she did not notice the storm build up in the sky and the sea begin to rage. The ship had only sailed a little further when the storm shook it up. The sailors tried to stir it to safety but many men including the prince fell into the sea. The little mermaid rushed to him and saved him from drowning. She took him ashore. Don't worry, you are safe. Open your eyes. But the prince lay unconscious. The mermaid decided to get help.
When she couldn't get any, she came back to where the prince was. She saw him surrounded by many people. A beautiful princess was kneeling by him as others worked to awaken him. The prince opened his eyes and the little mermaid was relieved that her prince will be saved now. You saved my life. Thank you. The prince knew nothing about the little mermaid. He didn't even know that it was she who had actually saved his life. This broke the mermaid's heart. She went back to her father's home. She told her sisters and grandmother what had happened. Forget him, child. Humans and we are very different. To be with him forever, you will have to get him to love you more than anything else he loves in the world, even more than his own parents. How will that ever happen? Think about it. But the little mermaid could not forget the handsome prince. Every night she visited the spot where she had laid him after saving his life. One day, she decided to visit the witch in her father's kingdom. Maybe she knew a way that the mermaid could be with the prince. Yes, there is a way. I can send you to the land above the sea. You will lose your fish tail and have legs. If by the second sunset you can get the prince to love you more than he loves his parents, then you can be with him forever. Otherwise, you will die and become full in the sea. But in return, you must give me your voice. But without my voice, how will I make the prince fall in love with me? You still have your pretty face and eyes. You will also be the most beautiful dancer anyone has ever seen. Now go! In a flash, the mermaid found herself on the land. Her fish tail turned into human legs. It caused her pain, but she could not even scream because the witch had taken her voice away. Somehow, the mermaid made her way to the prince's castle. There was a big celebration going on there. But the guards would not let the mermaid enter because they didn't know who she was and she couldn't answer them when they asked her about it. So she was not allowed to enter. Somewhere in the castle, music started playing. Remembering what the witch had said about dancing, Little Mermaid started dancing. Oh, I've never seen anyone dance so beautifully. Maybe she has come to dance for the royal family in the celebrations. Oh, she is a dancer. Let me take her to the goat. Once the mermaid reached the royal court, she saw that the celebration was for the wedding of the prince. 
little mermaid was heartbroken. She thought the only way of meeting the prince now would be to dance and draw his attention towards her. And so she performed a beautiful dance for the royal family. When the prince saw her, he came up to her. Hello, young lady. I have seen you in my dreams. Who are you? In his heart, the prince hoped that she would be the one who had saved him from drowning. He longed to hear the voice that had saved him when he was dying. But no sound came out when the little mermaid tried to reply. Forgive me, I think I am confused between you and someone else. But please do join us. The prince led her to the ship on which the wedding was going to take place. Many people spoke to her but she could not answer anyone. The princess was especially kind to her and took special care of her. I know you saved the prince that day. Thank you, because of you, I have found the love of my life. Please, always stay with us. The little mermaid saw that the princess and the prince loved each other and were very happy together. She decided not to pursue the prince anymore. He belonged to another woman. Although her heart ached to let him go, she happily attended the wedding and all the celebrations that went on throughout the next day. Soon it was evening. The second sunset was about to happen. The little mermaid knew she would die and become foam on the sea. As she stood there, looking at the prince and his princess, she heard some voices behind her. She turned around to see. Her sisters were there in the water. But all of them had very short hair now, instead of the long flowing locks they used to have earlier. Sisters, what are you doing here? We have come to save you. We went to the witch. In exchange of our hair, she gave us this knife. If you stab the prince through his heart before sunset, you can be saved. Handing the knife to the youngest sister, all the other sisters vanished under the water once again. The little mermaid stood there holding the knife to her heart. She looked at the newlyweds once again. She knew what she had to do. At the sunset, she tossed the knife into the sea. Goodbye, my love. And so, for the happiness of her beloved prince, the little mermaid sacrificed her own life and join the sea as foam. Tia, this is such a beautiful story. It shows how much the little mermaid loved the prince.
thank you for not going to the party and staying with me. That's because I love you, my little brother. I love you too, my darling sister Tia. Look, that's a wolf out there. He looks so big and cunning. Ya yeah, Tofu, wolves are known to be clever and cunning. My childhood memories with wolves are quite interesting, especially the story of the wolf and the seven little goats. The wolf and the seven little goats? Wow! I haven't heard that one. Tell me the story, Tia. Once upon a time, there lived a mama goat and her seven little kids. Theirs was a happy little home. All the seven little kids used to play in the meadows, into the wild with the butterflies and birds singing along. Their days used to go in complete harmony and bliss. Until one day, a big black wolf noticed these little kids playing in the meadow. Ha ha ha! Such an easy treat they are for me. I haven't eaten since ages. I'm sure these would make delicious lamb chops for my dinner tonight. He waited for the moment when the mother goat would leave her kids alone, patiently hiding in the bushes. Children, I'm going to the market to buy bread and cookies for you. I'll be back by evening. Just make sure you remain conscious of this big bad wolf. But mommy, how would we know if it's not you? The wretched wolf can easily be recognized with his hoarse voice and black feet. Don't open the door or else you little ones would get into danger. Don't worry mommy, we would take care of ourselves. The mother goat went off to the market and the kids made doubly sure with the locks on the door. After making sure that they are safe in their little home, off they went to play when suddenly there was a knock on the door. Hello my children, open the door. Your mother is back. Hearing the voice, the youngest one scampered to the door. Mommy, mommy, she's back! In no time, the eldest one ran to catch his little sibling. No, it's not our mommy. She hasn't got such a rough voice. Go away, you big bad wolf! A mother doesn't have such a hoarse voice. Hearing this, the wolf got annoyed and ran to get a box of chalk as he had heard that this would make his voice as soft as that of a baby. But kids, you shouldn't do this at any cost as this would only make your tummy ache badly. So off he went and cut off the whole box of chalk. Knocking on the door again, he said, Hello kids, your mother is back. Look what I have got for you. Cookies, breads and ginger ale. Oh, that sounds like a mother. Should we open the door now? But look down there. A mother has not got black feet. This is surely the wolf. Go away, you big bad wolf. A mother has not got black feet, but beautiful white feet. 
Hearing this, the wolf ran to the miller and jumped into the mountain of white dough. He was all white from head to toe. Running back to the house, he knocked again and said, Kids, your mother is back. Open the dough. That sounds like our mother and also the feet are white. We should open the door now. Not knowing what danger awaits them, all the kids ran to the door and opened it. But just to see who was standing there, the big bad wolf gave a loud laugh and brushed off his white powder. Hello kids, are you ready to become my feast tonight? The kids ran here and there to save their lives. One went inside the kettle, the other in the oven. One looked for a place under the bed and the other tried saving itself by hiding in the pot. The youngest one was so tiny that he managed to hide himself inside the clock case. The wolf, having no mercy, started taking them out from their hidings. One by one, he rolled them in a ball and gulped them up. Ah, there goes the first one. Oh, the second one is under the bed. Here you go. In no time, he ate all the kids except for the youngest one who was hiding in the clock case. With his tummy full, he burped and left the home. When the mother returned, she was shocked to see the door open and waited for the biggest nightmare that might have come true. The house was all upside down. The crockery was broken. The curtains were torn. The chair was broken and the kids were nowhere to be found. She cried for them. <laughs> children! Oh children! Where are you? At that very moment, the youngest one came out of the clock case and hugged his mother crying and howling. Oh mother, the bad wolf disguised us by sounding and looking like you. He ate up all my brothers and sisters. What will we do now? Don't worry, let's go and look for him. They went out searching for the wolf. His tummy was so filled that he slept off in a meadow near the house itself. His snores were so loud that even the branches of the tree were shuddering. The mother goat very quietly went near him and asked her youngest kid to get scissors thread and a needle. Off he went to get them. The mother goat very quietly slit open his tummy and took out all her kids from his tummy. They then filled up his tummy with stones as big as balls and then she stitched the tummy with the thread and the needle. The wolf had such a huge feast after so long and he slept all night. In the morning when he got up, he was so thirsty that he tried running to the well. But his belly was so heavy that he could hardly walk. He picked up his belly and managed to reach the well. But the moment he bent down to drink water, he couldn't handle the weight and fell in the well. The kids were looking at all of this from their window and shouted happily, Mommy, Mommy, the wolf has died! Now we can play freely outside without any fear. And they lived happily ever after. 
Now that was one cunning wolf. But Tofu, if you be bad to others, bad happens to you too. Always remember that. Ya Tia. What happened? Why can't you sleep? I don't know. Can you please put me off to sleep by telling me a story? Sure, Tofu. I'll tell you one of my favorite stories. The Little Red Riding Hood Little Red Riding Hood lived in a hut near a forest with her mother. She always wore a beautiful red hood while going out. One day, she went to see her grandmother. On her way, she met a wolf. Huh? Hello, where are you going? I am going to see my granny. She lives behind that hill. The wolf got a wicked idea. <laughs> the wolf ran to Granny's house. got into Granny's bed. After some time, Little Red Riding Hood reached the house. She saw the wolf lying in her Granny's bed. Oh Granny, what big eyes you have! So that I can see you better. Granny, what big ears you have! So that I can hear you better. Granny, what a big nose you have. So that I can smell you better. Oh Granny, what big teeth you have. So that I can eat you better. A woodcutter was in the forest and he heard the scream. He ran to the house just to see the wolf attacking the little girl. He hit the wolf over the head and this made the wolf open his mouth and shout. The granny jumped out. The wolf ran away and the little red riding hood never saw the wolf again. So Tofu, Little Red Riding Hood, was able to save herself and her old grandmother too. For your favourite rhymes, stories and more, join Kids Heart family. Subscribe here.